After spending nearly 60 hours over the last couple of weeks playing Roblox Aftermath and drowning in a pool of my own sweat while learning this game, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding on how this game works and how to play this game, and I want to give that knowledge off to any new players that are trying to get into this game, or maybe to some people that can only play this game on the weekends when it's free, because currently during the week, it sits at a paid access price point of 199 Robux, and a lot of people can't pay that and play it during the week, so a lot of people don't have enough time to learn things and to compete against all the tryhard players that play all week long. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys the basics of the game, some combat tips, and just how to survive in Roblox Aftermath. If you are familiar with survival PvP type games like Rust and DayZ, etc., this game will come pretty naturally to you and you shouldn't have a hard time learning this game at all. Now, first off, when you join Roblox Aftermath, we're going to go ahead and take care of some of the settings in the menu right away. Go ahead and press tab to go to your inventory and then click the settings menu at the bottom left. Now in here in your video settings, you're going to want to turn your brightness all the way to one and your contrast all the way to negative one. And once you do that, I know the global shadows are kind of pretty looking in the game, but go ahead and turn those off too. This game is very dark and there's also some really hard areas to see in even during the day. So these settings will actually help you be able to see players during the day in those dark areas and at night when it's pitch black. So you can actually get into fights with people and actually win them successfully and not be blinded by the darkness. Next up, let's go to the weapon effects, turn your bullet effect quality to low, and turn the shell casings off. This should give you some more frames when you're getting into close quarter combat fights. Otherwise, you might experience some pretty big frame drops when you're trying to fight people up close, and you might end up losing because this game isn't super optimized yet. It's only an alpha. Now, under the global settings, I really highly recommend to turn off motion blur because it's pretty disgusting. World quality, do whatever feels good to you. I don't notice this actually helping with FPS at all on my end, but but if you have a not as good computer, if you put that to low, it should help maybe a little bit. And entity render distance, I recommend keeping this on medium. If you put it on high, you're going to be rendering zombies that you can't even see. And if you put it on low or minimum, you'll probably not be able to render zombies that you need to be able to see. Now, feel free to change your audio settings and your controls to whatever you want. I recommend at least messing with your aim sensitivity under the controls. And then once you're done with that, go into the game settings and adjust your field of view to what feels comfortable for you. The game defaults at 70. I personally like to play on 90 for any FPS type of game, but go ahead and mess with this and get a comfortable FOV for yourself. Now let's go over some basic controls for the game. If you press Z, you can ping locations, which is very useful if you're playing with the squad. Pinging is a great system to give yourself and your teammates some intel. So if you press Z, you can ping an enemy, a zombie, loot, etc. And if you want to give more details on what you're pinging, you can actually hold down Z and you can mark what you're pinging. You can mark loot, you can mark enemies, zombies specifically, and you can also mark to defend yourself if you need to go take a poop break. Now again, press tab to toggle your inventory, and in the inventory on the left, you can open up the craft menu go back into the settings or even check out the shop if you have some bow bucks to spend next up press m to view the map we'll get into the map details in just a second but now you can at least see the map and also when you're looking at the map if there's a specific area you would like to go to you can actually hover over it inside the map and press z to ping it and it'll make a ping on that spot in the map so you know where you want to run to next and you don't have to sit here and be lost push to talk doesn't work so disregard that f is for flashlight so if you're holding your flashlight you can turn it on and off by pressing f or if you have a weapon with the flashlight attachment it does the same thing there you can press v to toggle your view and to go into third person or go back to first person third person i recommend using while you're running around so you can see all around you and first person i recommend using it always when you're in combat on this game and finally you could press j to whistle which could be used to distract zombies to call your homeboys cute or to just troll other players now in your inventory you can actually press q to drop items or press f to scrap items you can also hold left shift and spam q over whatever item to drop individual pieces of items since you can't currently split drop items in the game and finally you can press e to interact c to crouch hold down c while you're standing to go prone or hold c to lock doors now that our settings are configured and we got the hotkeys down, let's go ahead and talk about what Aftermath actually is. Aftermath, again, is a survival PvP type game, and this game is about zombies mainly. With any game like this, you're of course going to be looking out 
to survive zombies, but also the big threat is other players. People on this game get geared up and they fight other people to steal their gear and to continue to survive. So don't think people are gonna be friendly towards you or nice, just assume that everybody is gonna wanna kill you and treat this more like an FPS game like Call of Duty. When you see enemies, shoot. Now when fighting zombies or players, you will get this indicator here and this shows that you're in combat. If you do try to leave while this indicator shows up, you will lose all of your stuff. Now, besides zombies and players, there are also some other things you need to look out for while you're playing this game. The main thing, like any other survival game, is yes, you do have to feed yourself and drink. You have a hunger and thirst bar, keep that in mind. But this game has a little bit more to it than some other survival games. First off, there are infections on this game. If you happen to drink a bottle of dirty water, get hit by a zombie, or even get shot in the leg by a player and they break your bone, any of those things can lead to an infection on this game. It looks like a little virus icon, and when you you have an infection you need to take antibiotics to get rid of it now yes i just said you can get shot and break your bones but besides getting shot and breaking your bones you can also fall from high points on the map and break your bones as well when you have a broken bone you cannot sprint if you do try to sprint you will take more damage and you will be prone to giving yourself infections so again you'll need antibiotics but to fix a broken bone you can actually craft leg splints to fix those up and finally there is bleeding on this game if you get shot or hit enough by zombies you will start to bleed and you can monitor this on the bottom left to see how bad your bleed is the bigger the number you see over your bleed the worse the bleed is and you need to bandage yourself quickly if you don't bandage yourself while you're bleeding you will bleed out and die that's everything you pretty much have to worry about on this game again zombies infections bleeds broken bones hunger and thirst but mainly other players so now that we have a basic idea of what we're actually surviving, let's go ahead and get started and let's teach you how to actually survive. So first off, when you spawn in, there are some areas you're probably going to want to avoid, especially if you're a new player on this game. If you open your map, there's going to be different areas marked on the map. And there's also going to be some small areas like neighborhoods that aren't marked on the map, but you can tell that they're there by seeing random roads in different spots on the map. The white zones on the map are the basic looting zones. These areas, you're probably only going to really find civilian basic gear in these the yellow zones are the mid-tier zones these zones you'll probably find some military gear and some better civilian gear but the red tiers like airfield prison and the nuclear power plant these are the best looting zones and the high tier looting zones these areas you'll find mostly only military gear and these will be the best areas to get loot from now when you start the game out you're going to want to stay away from some of the big areas and get a couple of basic items first so let's go ahead and just not go over to military airfield paradise or the nuclear power plant military airfield and paradise are huge pvp areas and if you do go in these as a new player you might find some stuff but you'll probably end up getting sniped in the head nuclear power plant i wouldn't even worry about going here at all during your time playing the game unless you really want to but this place is a radioactive zone and you need a full hazmat suit to actually access it and a gas mask and not only that, but there's so many zombies in here and the radiation actually damages your items over time. So I recommend just staying away from nuclear power plant completely, unless you really want to explore it later on. Now, Redfield is a mid-tier loot zone and I recommend to some newer players to stay away from it when you're first starting off the game. But if you're a little bit more used to survival PvP type games, you can go ahead and go to Redfield. I think it'll be not too much of a problem for you if you already have some intel on how these games work. So depending on where you spawn, it is time to start gathering necessities so you can actually survive in this game. So at the very start of the game, when you spawn in, your number one goal should be to find or to craft a backpack. When you open your inventory, you will see that you have a shirt and pants, both with two by two slots but you also got to keep in mind that this game does have a weight system so yes you can fill your slots with any items but you also have to keep in mind that you do have weight and if you overweight yourself with items you'll no longer be able to carry more stuff and it does end up making your stamina go down a little bit faster so keep that in mind now backpacks will spawn in dressers wardrobes it can even spawn on tables on some floors in cars and pretty much in any basic house or building. They are a little bit more rare than some of the basic necessity items that you'll be finding, but you'll eventually find one. And if you don't find one, you can end up crafting one. Also, when looking around for a backpack, you can find clothes such as puffer jackets or BDU military shirts or even tactical shirts or pants. And these will also give you more slots and more weight. Now, besides getting a backpack, we're going to want to collect a few basic items at the start of the game. First off, when you see any clothing items such as shoes, shirts, 
pants, or if you do have a backpack and find extra backpacks, you want to take any of these items and scrap them right away. You can pick them up and then hover over them in your inventory and press F to scrap. And when you scrap clothing items, they will give you cloth scraps. Some of the clothing items will also give you plastic scraps, which can be used to craft some bullets like shotgun shells. So at the start of the game, I like to go through homes and just pick up any clothing that I find and tear it up for some cloth scraps. Then after I do that, I like to go over to my crafting menu and craft at least one stack of bandages. One stack of bandages is eight bandages. Now, once you actually have these bandages, you can go ahead and click and hold to drag these and put them in your quick use slot. That way, say if a zombie hits you or a player shoots you and you start bleeding, if you have your bandages on quick use number five, you can just press number five on your keyboard and you'll start bandaging up. Now, I also recommend while you're collecting clothes to also pick apart some of the small trees that you find. You can go up to them and hold E to gather sticks from them. Now, we don't have to worry about the sticks unless we want to craft a splint, but let's try to just avoid breaking our bones at the start. Just don't do any stupid jumps off of buildings, okay? So you can go ahead and drop the sticks at the start to just save yourself some inventory space and some weight but keep the saps and once you get enough saps you can use these with those cloth scraps that we just got and craft healing salves which are pretty much a better tier bandage and these will actually heal you more than the bandages do the bandages are better for covering up bleeds but the healing salves are better for actually healing and getting your health back up you can also find dress bandages and med kits that are better for healing your health as well so after we have some of these basic healing items we can go ahead and start gathering food and drinks it's it's pretty easy to find food and drinks. They spawn pretty much anywhere, but the main areas you're going to find food and drinks are in any kitchen in a building. You can go through the fridge and the cabinets. I recommend grabbing at least two food items and two drink items at the start. You can also find energy drinks and coffee, and these will boost your stamina and give you more than 100 stamina so you can run for a very long time. If you don't have a backpack yet, just put your food and drinks in your pants and then use your shirt for the cloth scraps and the healing items. Now, when you start this game off, you're going to think that, oh, I shouldn't pick up any ammo yet until I actually have a gun, but actually just pick up any ammo that you find, okay? Because you could scrap ammo on this game and craft the ammo type that you need. And now that you have the metal scraps and gunpowder, let's just go ahead and try to find a weapon. Usually civilian weapons will spawn in cabinets, dressers, and the main area you're going to find civilian weapons are in cars or on tables inside of homes. Now, once you do find your first weapon, you can actually look at it in your inventory and it will tell you which ammo type you need. Or if you look at the bottom right of the screen, it's going to tell you what ammo type you need. Now, since you've been scrapping ammo and you have some gunpowder and some metal scraps now, you can go in your crafting menu, find that ammo type in the crafting menu and start crafting bullets. Now, crafting bullets is going to be pretty slow. You're not going to have a ton of ammo to start out with, but any ammo is ammo and people die pretty fast on this game. So even if you only have a couple of bullets, keep those reloaded into your magazine and you'll be on your way and you'll be good to go. Keep in mind, there are little bars of durability and weapons on this game do have durability and same with some armor pieces that we'll talk about later. So keep in mind what your durability is because once your weapon actually goes to zero durability, you'll no longer be able to shoot. So if you do happen to find any weapon repair kits at the start of the game while you're looting around, go ahead and pick those up and you can repair your weapon and get that durability back up. Now, since we have the basic necessities taken care of, and hopefully by this point you also have a weapon, make sure you also pick up any melee weapon you find. Melee weapons are great for fighting zombies. You can punch zombies with your flashlight that you start out with or with your fists, but melee weapons will make this easier. So now that we have collected some basic necessities, let's get into combat because now you're going to want to make sure you're keeping an eye out for zombies and for enemy players while you progress and try to get better gear. First, we'll talk about some zombie combat. When you do encounter zombies, make sure you hit them on the head with your melee weapon. Aim directly for their head and click. Some melee weapons you can kill civilian zombies with in one hit to two hits, but military zombies usually will take three to four hits. And again, aim for the head because any body shots is not going to to do enough damage and they will keep coming after you now i recommend only using melee weapons to actually kill zombies but if you need to shoot you can shoot but keep in mind a couple of things if you do fire a weapon that does not have a suppressor on it you will make other zombies get aggroed around the area and the more you shoot the more radius you have where zombies are going to hear you and start swarming that area so i recommend if you find zombies at the start of the game Either avoid them at all costs or use melee items to stab them in the head. 
you're going to want to be quiet because again any shooting is going to attract more zombies but you're also going to probably attract other players because this game is again a survival pvp game and people are going to want to take any loot that you have so try and keep it quiet when fighting zombies but there's a couple ways you can actually counter zombies one they're pretty easy to cheese in this game so you could jump into windows or different buildings where they can't really get into and just stab them from afar where they're not going to be able to hit you but otherwise again they do like sound so if you want to try to get rid of zombies zombies by using sound you can if i actually go to paradise one of the bigger cities in the game there are going to be lots of zombies and hordes around but say there's a bunch of zombies covering a building that i want to get into i can either try and just run all the way around them and find a different entrance into that building i could try to do the not recommended thing and go right into the horde and try to fight them off or i could try to make sounds in different areas by either whistling or if i find a grenade i could toss the grenade away from that building so the zombies will run to the grenade or i can use a loud weapon to shoot at a different area of the city get those zombies to start running in that direction run around the horde and then make my way into the building the last thing is there are vehicles on this game which if you do have a vehicle you could pretty much just use those to kill any zombies that are in your way and vehicles are pretty much one tap and you can run over any horde but if you're on foot just be cautious with zombies again aim for the head with a melee item and while you're fighting them make sure you're always backing up so they can't actually hit you and you're avoiding their attacks do not run directly into them now if you absolutely have to shoot them again that is an option but i recommend looking for a suppressor because if you have a suppressor one other players won't be able to hear you when you do shoot at zombies and two other zombies won't be able to hear you when you're shooting at zombies now that we have some tips on how to fight zombies let's get into the big part of this game player combat this is where the fun comes in on this game and to get into different pvp situations can be pretty exciting but also can be pretty tough especially when you're new at the game stay confident you'll get it eventually so first off when we're fighting other players we want to be mindful of a couple of things we want to try to get a good look at our enemy before we engage in any fights now that can be hard if an enemy has to jump on you, but if you are able to get the jump on enemies or stay kind of quiet and see what they have, that's the best way to approach. You first want to take notes on how many enemies you're fighting. If it's one person, the chances are better. Unless you have a squad as well, then you can squad versus squad. And you also want to keep in mind what weapon they have. Now at the start of the game, you might not know all the weapons in the game, which is fine. But if that weapon looks pretty big and intimidating, just compare it with what weapon you have. If it looks like they have an assault rifle, or a sniper rifle and you only have a pistol keep that in mind and either try to avoid the fight or get the jump on them next we want to keep in mind their armor do they have a vest piece on or do they have a helmet on armor on this game will protect you from quite a bit of bullets or at least make them not damage you as heavy so if you're not armored and there is an armored player near you then there's some ways to go about this first off if they don't have any armor at all i recommend just going for straight headshots headshots are usually a one to two hit kill depending on what weapon you have and players will die pretty quick if you aim for their head now if they do have a helmet on let's just try to focus on body shots if you have a bigger gun headshots are still very effective even if they have a helmet on but if you don't have a great gun just go for body shots if you see that they have a helmet on now if they have a vest on and no helmet again let's just try to shoot for headshots but if your aim's not that great as long as you can shoot somewhere on their body even if they have a vest that's fine and if they have a vest and helmet on then again try and just aim for their head anyways but any shots that you get on them at this point will help and will damage them and get them to die and especially if you can get some hits on them again there is bleeding on this game so they might get a bleed on them and then they might eventually bleed out if they can't heal in time and ultimately just keep in mind that whatever fight you get into the goal is to shoot them more than they can shoot you so you can walk away with their stuff there's so many different ways to approach combat on this game and you'll learn that quickly but just keep in mind a couple different things like we talked about here keep in mind what weapon they have what armor they have and how many numbers are in their team if you have to engage face to face in a fight make sure you're staying low to the ground making note of all the cover around you and trying to plan one step ahead of your enemy at all times moving forward into this tutorial let's go back to a little bit of the crafting so earlier i taught you how to craft some healing items and some ammo and such but just keep in mind that there is crafting on this game so if there's certain items that you can't find like weapon or armor repair kits or if you really just want to always have med kits or other useful items on you just know that this game has a pretty good crafting menu and you're going to find a lot of materials and random items in buildings as you loot a lot of these random items if they don't seem useful to you just keep in mind that you might be able to craft something useful out of them 
But the crafting menu is a big part of this game and it can really influence how fights go. Especially if you're low on materials, but you're engaged in a fight, you can try and plan out your fight by just using the crafting menu if you have a second to see what ammo you can craft, what healing items you can craft, or even what traps you can craft to try and play out your enemy. Now, some extra things to note about this game. You can find vehicles such as sedans, police cars, taxis, and trucks. The vehicles on this game are currently invulnerable and they have unlimited fuel, so you won't have to worry about repairing anything or fueling them up. But if you do find gas cans, you can note down that these gas cans can actually power the radio tower in the game or the bomb shelter. The bomb shelter does have a secret area, so if you actually go into the bomb shelter and fuel up the generator inside and you happen to find a black mysterious floppy disk either on a player that you kill or find the operative zombie to get the black mysterious floppy disk, you can use this to insert it into the lab laptop and get into the bunker where there's a ton of stuff in here or you can find blue mysterious floppy disks that usually will drop when you're fighting zombies so with these again you can power up the radio tower climb up the top to the tower use the laptop put the mysterious floppy disk inside and then you can call in airdrops because otherwise airdrops do cost robux on this game to wrap things up i really hope that this tutorial helped you get at least a basic understanding of all the necessities in this game give you some insight on how combat works a little bit and how there's different indicators in this game like infections broken bones and bleeding as you continue to play the game you will learn more and get better at the combat and in different situations hopefully this just gives you a good head start so you can learn how to survive and slowly build up your inventory and your arsenal to get into bigger fights and to continue to gear up and to eventually become one of the most geared players in the game and dominate servers and dominate other players. Now, one last note I should say is that this is a survival PvP game. So just expect people to be toxic when you kill them or when they kill you. They're gonna think that they're better than you because they killed you on a Roblox game, but who cares what they think? Just ignore them, keep your confidence up and keep playing and you'll get better as time goes on. But anyways, I hope this helps you get started in Roblox Aftermath. If it does drop a like on this video subscribe for some more aftermath videos and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye